What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I am always contending for the faith once, for all, delivered to the saints. Today is a response video. We're responding to a video where children are being taught the Lord's Supper. Admittedly, I wrestled with whether or not I was even going to do this. And there's a lot of reasons, personal reasons, that I'm going to keep to myself. But ultimately, after talking to a lot of my friends, we decided this video needed to be made. This response needed to happen. Not out of spite for mainline American evangelicalism, not denominationalism, but out of love for Jesus' little lambs, for the children of our church, out of Christian love for children. This response needs to be made. Now, we are going to watch a video from a church called Calvary Bible. It's a local Bible church, uh, and this video was made talking to children about the Lord's Supper. Now, I have to state up front that I am going to take some pop shots at this video. It, 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 this is YouTube. I mean, it's entertainment, okay? I can't lose entertainment even when I'm talking about a serious topic. I am not. I repeat, not taking pop shots at these children, okay? It is out of love, love for these children that I'm making this video. I cannot make that any more clear. I'm not attacking these children. I'm not mocking these children. I'm making these, this video for these children. Am I going to mock the pastor? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In the same way that Jesus referred to the religious elite of his day as a brood of vipers, yes, I'm going to mock this pastor. So let's watch as Calvary Bible talks to its kids about the Lord's Supper. Right there. Hi. How are you? He's so cute. I'm sure you don't trip over anything. I, I'm wild. I'm Calvary Kids Talk Communion. Fantastic. Are we all set? We are good to go. And who are you? Have you ever heard of the term the Lord's Supper? The Lord's Supper was that mean? That is a great question, little lady. Very Lutheran question. What does this mean? What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and the wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and drink? Great question, little lady. But that is not the answer that this pastor is going to give you. You never heard of the Lord's Supper? Not really. Okay. I think I've read about it. Not really, no. Communion is when you're being kind. So... Literally none of these kids in his church knows what it is. My eight-year-old, my eight-year-old knows what the Lord's Supper is. And not even because he's been catechized on it. There was one time when he saw me at home drinking a glass of wine and he came up to me in his beautiful, sweet little William voice and said, Daddy, is that wine Jesus' blood? And we had a really good conversation about sacrament of the altar, about sacraments in general. But he asked me that question from a place where he already knew what the Lord's Supper was. Why? Why does my eight-year-old already know what the Lord's Supper is without me having even catechized him on it? Because he's with me, next to me, kneeling with me, watching me intently every single Sunday when I am in church receiving the host and the chalice. And he hears those blessed words Christ spoke instituting this holy sacrament. And the word of God does not return to him without having accomplished that for which it was sent. He knows what the Lord's Supper is because he hears Christ's words and he sees me living those words. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So here's problem number one with this video. This pastor, your kids don't even know what the Lord's Supper is. 
And what does that say about you as a pastor? That the parents in your church are not being encouraged by you to catechize their children into the Christian faith. And rather than educating them on what the Lord's Supper actually is, you're just putting together this cute, oh, kids say the darndest things video for your church's YouTube channel. This is, this is problem number one, and this is absolutely despicable. Do you ever hear uh, something called the Last Supper? Yeah. What's that all about? I'm just going to say it's not last. I mean, that he ate not with not, not the Israelites. Supper, mm-hmm. and so, so what happened on the Last Supper? <laughs> In my line of work, that's called a probing question. We use them when consumers aren't playing the game that we want them to play. Basically, he's leading the witness <laughs> in order to get the answer that he wants, because the witness in this case obviously does not know the answer. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it not with his not uh, with his favorite people. <laughs> the look on his face. Oh, this is embarrassing for him. Do you know what we eat and what we drink together? Um, probably apple cider, apple juice. Hmm. You eat one. A uh, little cracker and uh, some kind of, of juice. Crackers and juice was a snack time at daycare. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Applebaum. Uh, yeah, could could you bring in some more Christ checks and Welches, please? The toddlers are still hungry. Uh, clearly, clearly, there is not enough substance to this meal that we are giving them. Uh, Jesus used unleavened bread and wine, oinos in the Greek, which is the word for wine. Koine Greek has a word for unfermented juice, but it never appears in the New Testament, only oinos. So Jesus used unleavened bread and wine, and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this. This is problem number two of this video. The soda, um, ice cream and the soda. Grilled cheese. Bread. Bread? Yeah. And three crackers. Grape juice represents his, Jesus' blood and the cracker rep- represents God's body. Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. The forgiveness of sins. Or, or this is my body. This is my blood. Or, or better yet, the cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? And most Woefully seriously, whoever therefore eats or eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. Why on earth would Paul warn that eating and drinking? would, in an unworthy manner, without discerning the body and blood of the Lord, would bring judgment upon a person if it's just a symbol. It sounds to me like Paul thinks it is exactly what Jesus says it is, that it is his true body and his true blood, given and shed for you and me for the forgiveness of our sins. 
Do you think that sounds like a great meal? <laughs> yeah, no. What higher gift can we inherit? It is faith's bond and solid base. It is the strength of heart and spirit, the covenant of hope and grace. Lord, may thy body and thy blood be for my soul, the highest good. This is a good, good meal for us. Do you know what we eat? What? A cracker. <laughs> Exactly the right response. I love this girl. Exactly the right response. A cracker. <laughs> Errol, you better order up another batch of those Christ checks that we have that we give out to the kitties because we only do this once every two years and the last batch went bad. I love this little girl. <laughs> I love that little girl. Why does it say eat a cracker? Just one cracker. Yeah, just one little, little, not a whole cracker, just a little piece of a cracker. What? Why? <laughs> you got me there, little lady. You got me there. I mean, Jesus used unleavened bread and said, do this. So, why do we eat a cracker? By the way, by the way, did you know, uh... <laughs> As far as the cup here, let's talk about the cup for a minute. Did you know that Welch's grape juice, which was invented in 1869, was invented for the sole purpose of replacing the wine used during the sacrament of the altar? So that means from about 30, 33 AD until 1869, roughly 1,840 years, the Christian church used actual wine for the sacrament. And while we're on the topic, side tangent, no one in Christianity even suggested what he's about to suggest in this video, that the Lord's Supper is a symbol until the 16th century, when Ulrich Zwingli argued with Luther about the Lord's Supper. So for the first 16 centuries of the Christian church, the church understood even Rome, twisting it into transubstantiation, even then, they still understood that Jesus was being literal. This is his body. This is his blood for the first 16 centuries and for the first 19 centuries of the Christian church. And we're only in the 21st now. For the first 19 of those 21 centuries, the church used wine. Welch's grape juice was invented for the sole purpose of replacing sacramental wine at the sacrament of the altar because Welch's good little evangelical that he was thought it was scandalous that the church was drinking wine. Because it represents Jesus' body. That's why. Liar! Liar! Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my which is given for you. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. But Ryan... He was being figurative, right? Jesus always spoke in symbols and parables. We can't take Jesus literally when he says, this is my body, this is my blood. We can't take him literally. It's funny how people, fundamentalist evangelicals, presbobaptomethocostalists, we take the Bible literally. Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. Jesus was being figurative. Look, Jesus was not being figurative because the Apostle John accounts for this in his gospel in chapter 16, verse 29, when he says, he, the disciples say, finally, finally, Jesus is speaking plainly. Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Jesus is finally speaking plainly. 
John's gospel records of that night. Take this and eat it. This is my body. Take this and drink it. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Finally, Jesus is speaking plainly. So, I mean, there's that. Little too on the nose. Well, hashtag sorry, not sorry is means is. And that is problem number three with this video. We continue. Oh. Yeah. Holy moly, holy moly. Yeah. That's very straight. I agree with this. This girl, I love her. She's my favorite in this video. My heart just bursts for joy with this little girl. I agree with you, little lady. It is very strange considering how unequivocally clear Jesus is that the bread is his body and that the wine is his blood. But don't take my word for it. Did you know that in Koine Greek, they did not have to write the word is because the word is would carry over in translation. And I know this from firsthand experience studying Greek, translating myself from Koine Greek into English. I know that the word is doesn't need to appear in the text because it carries over in translation. So when the hearer or the reader reads a sentence, they know that is is there, even though the word isn't physically present in Koine Greek because it carries over. But but in the New Testament, every time, every time, Jesus is quoted as saying, this is my body, this is my blood, the Greek word estin appears in the text. Estin is in English. They don't have to use the word is in Koine Greek, but every time Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood, they put the word estin, is, into the text. Why? For double literary emphasis that Jesus is being unequivocally literal. But you didn't know that, did you? Isn't learning other languages fun? We continue. When we have communion or the Lord's Supper, we remember that Jesus died for us. That's one of the main reasons we do that. It's one of the reasons that we do it. But the main reason that we receive the sacrament of the altar every Sunday is because of the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So do this in remembrance of me is certainly a part of why we receive the Lord's Supper as often as we gather. But it's not the main reason. Christians, we would be better served if our altars did not say, do this in remembrance of me, but rather our altars said, given and shed for you. We would be better served to be reminded in front of our faces that that is the main reason that we go to the sacrament of the altar. Do you ever forget anything? You've never forgotten anything? Really? All right, so he just goes off on this tangent about trying to imply the do this in remembrance of me, but we often forget. It literally, you want to talk about missing the mark, which is one of the definitions of what sin is. This entirely misses the mark. He just goes off on this. Ugh. What kind of things do you forget? Sometimes forget to like bring things. Oh, yeah. And like my shoes to school. You didn't bring shoes to school? Yeah, he never yeah, follows up on the I points usually he's trying have to make extra here, extra pairs at school that I leave there. Uh, you ever forget something? Yeah, I, I forget some things really easy. Sometimes I remember things. When's the last time you forgot something? What did you forget? He's driving I home a point, but run. he never <laughs> you, you can't even remember what you <laughs> forgot the last time. Did you have a good time? I hope you had a good time. I had a great time talking to you. Well, I almost had a brain aneurysm watching you lie and manipulate these little children of your church so that your church could have a cute video of the ah, kids say the darndest things. You're spewing damning false doctrine at these children. And isn't that cute? All right. That's all I got for you. Thank you very much. 
<sighs> it's not all I've got for you, Pastor, uh, and you're not welcome. Look, okay. So, problem number one, these kids don't even know what the Lord's Supper is. Two, they think it involves crackers and grape juice. And three, they're being told it is a symbol. When they're supposed to know what this is, because the pastor is supposed to be instilling in the parents of his church that they ought to be catechizing their children into the Christian faith. They are to use unleavened bread and wine because Jesus said, do this. And for the first 19 centuries of Christianity, the church did until an evangelical got a bug up his backside and decided to invent grape juice that would not ferment. And for the first 16 centuries of the church, nobody thought this was a symbol. Granted, Rome took it too far, okay? Rome went to transubstantiation. Luther backed it to what the Bible says, real presence. Bread, yes. Body, yes. Blood, yes. Wine, yes. In, with, and under is the best way that Lutheran fathers could come up to describe what Paul explains in the Corinthians, interchanging the phrases body, bread, and blood, wine, okay? So... For the first 16 centuries, the church knew that this was Christ's body and blood, and Luther brought the emphasis back onto given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Why did I make this video? Because Jesus says, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Now, Best case scenario here, the children at this church, when they go up to whatever it is that they have at that church for the Lord's Supper, best case scenario, they're not receiving it. And they can't eat and drink judgment upon themselves, and they're not receiving it, presumably, because the pastor's not confessing that that's what it is. He has instructed them in wrong belief, and he is denying the very words of Christ. So best case scenario, these kids are not not receiving the Lord's Supper. But even in that scenario, they are being deprived of one of the greatest gifts, one of the marks of the true church, with the best thing that Christ has ever given to his baptized children. The assurance that whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has life in them, and he will raise them from the dead on the last day. Whoever does not eat the flesh of the Son of Man or drink his blood does not have life in them. Worst case scenario, Worst case scenario, these children are receiving the sacrament of the altar. They're denying the body and the blood. They're not discerning the body and the blood. They're not examining themselves. They're not confessing the truth. They're denying that it is what Jesus says it is. And in that scenario, this pastor is leading these children to eat and drink judgment upon themselves. And Jesus says, anyone, anyone, pastors included, leads one of these little ones who believes in him to sin. It would be better for them that a great millstone be fastened around their neck and they'd be drowned in the depths of the sea. Let that be a lesson to you, pastor of Calvary Bible Church. You need to reteach these children. You need to re-examine the scriptures for yourself. You need to rightly discern the word of truth. You need to be apt to teach in order to be a pastor. And you are none of those things in this video. And you are leading these little children who believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to sin. This is not a fun, cute video. This is a visceral, evil attack on the words and promises of Christ. I did not want to make this video, but it needed to be made. It needed to be made. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.